Hello everyone, Daniel Yuck here. Thank you all for tuning in today, I appreciate you. I would like to take some time and bring a video sharing with you all my logic, my thought process, and my approach that I take when it comes to shading with a mag. Should you have any questions along the way, I encourage you to drop a comment down below and I will do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. With that being said, let's dive straight on into this. Where I like to begin is basically taking a look at the design and determining what size needle configuration am I going to use for that specific design at hand. I feel personally that the ability to pick out the correct needles for each and every tattoo we do is something that's often overlooked and if anything is kind of looked little into. So being able to pick the appropriate needles and being able to pick them while we're planning out the tattoo is for me at least very crucial to the overall tattoo workflow and the overall results that I'm going to be achieving. So take your time, get comfortable with choosing the appropriate needles that's best for each and every session at hand. So for this part of the demonstration, I'm using a Mass Pro Tattoo Needle, and this is going to be a 17 round mag if I remember correctly. The reason why I chose this specific configuration was because the design itself was more of a medium sized design. I had more surface area that I needed to shade in. So the logic behind choosing a bigger size mag like this was I wanted to cover more surface area with the least amount of passes. The voltage that I am currently running in this clip is about 6.5 volts if I remember correctly. When I am using mags and when I am shading, I typically tend to run at a lower voltage anywhere from about, let's say, 6 to about 7.5. It really does depend on the setup that I am using. But I'm typically in the lower voltage range. And as you can see right here in this demonstration, I am shading in a manner that's comfortable for me. So I'm starting at one point and I'm whipping these shades towards me and out, as you can see, giving me this nice shaded effect. Before we proceed, one thing that I want to point out is unfortunately I would not be able to give you one specific setting that you can use every single time when you were shading with a mag. This is going to vary from tattoo artist to tattoo artist and setup to setup. Everyone's going to have different applications, everyone's going to have different ways of doing things, but what I can do is kind of give you the ballpark of where I am working at and where I typically work at and you can kind of pick and choose on your end and see what works best for you. Once I've picked out the needles and once I've set my correct voltage range, now I'm going to look at the design. I'm going to figure out where I want to put my shading. I'm going to figure out where I want the darkest points, where I want these lightest points. And then this is going to help me determine the gray wash that I'm going to be using as well. I personally like to use a pre-made gray wash set from a company called Dynamic. It has four different tones, 20, 40, 60, and 80, 20 being the lightest, 80 being the darkest. And the reason why I prefer to go with a pre-made gray wash set is that way every time I shade, I can achieve consistent results and I know exactly what to expect from the different tones. Let's get more into the technical aspect of shading with a mag. So as you can see right here in this demonstration, I'm actually cross hatching right now as I started pulling the original shading towards me and as you can see I'm going back and forth in a right and left direction. On this section right here of the demonstration, I'm actually tipping the mag over and I'm using the very, very side of the mag so that way I create a little bit of space right there in between the shading that I was just applying to the new shading that I'm currently doing. And you're also going to notice that the machine is moving at a certain voltage and my hand is keeping up with this specific speed right here to achieve these nice, clean, consistent results. So you're going to notice when I wipe away, the shading looks nice and smooth. It doesn't look blotchy or anything like that, even though I am I'm going over it a couple of times and cross hatching, I'm still achieving clean, consistent results. One thing that I want to point out is that I'm only working off the very, very tips of the needles here. I'm not going like I would with lining and, you know, getting into that dermis. I'm actually just using brush like motions with the very tips of the needles to achieve these sort of shading gradients here. So when I start combining these variables such as adequate ink flow with my hand speed and voltage matching and I'm applying the correct application and technical technique here as you can see where I'm just using the very very tips of the needles I'm going to achieve some nice clean consistent results. So using light brush like motions allows me to get nice clean gradient shading like this. And another important variable that I'm thinking about when I'm shading is where I want my dark points to be and where I want my light points to be. Where is my light source coming from? So these are also some things that I'm um, thinking about and that I'm trying to envision within my imagination. 
One method that I use to achieve different tones and different gradients of shading within my shading is I use different pressures. So when I press down a little bit harder with the mag in certain areas, it becomes a little bit darker. So I'm using different pressures to create different darker areas and different lighter areas. If I want an area darker, I'll use a tad bit more pressure. If I'm looking for some lighter tones, then I'm gonna go ahead and just use the very, very tips of the needles, working the machine almost like a paintbrush. That's one way that we can go about achieving darker areas. Another method that I use to achieve darker areas, and especially if it's just going to be in a smaller area, is I'll simply go over it a couple of more times. So let's say in this area right here, you can see that I'm working off the side of the mag right here, and I want one area to be a little bit more darker than the other, so therefore I'll hit it again until I can develop or build up rather that darker gradient that I am looking for. So we could approach it either way. We can go over it a couple of times to go ahead and build up to to that dark gradient or we can use a little bit more pressure to go ahead and get to the gradient off the rip whatever is more comfortable to you as an artist would work out well for me i kind of utilize both it just whatever comes natural along the workflow to me Along with knowing where I want my darker shading to be and my lighter shading to be, I'm also thinking about where specifically on the design I'm going to be placing this shading. One important tip to remember is every time we place down these needles here for shading, no matter how light the gray wash is, there is going to be some sort of tint of shading there. Again, whether it was a lighter gray wash or a darker gray wash. So every time we're committing to placing shading, we have to know why we're putting shading there before we start putting the shading, but not only should we know why, we should know which direction the shadings are gonna go and how dark we want certain areas and how light we want other areas. These are all important variables that I feel we should be planning out prior to even tattooing the shading into the actual tattoo. So because of my planning right here in this area, I decided to artistically work off of the sides of my needles. But not only that, I artistically decided to leave some of the skin showing around the edge right there of the robe. So I didn't start at the edge of where the line was. I left a little bit of skin showing through and I began shading as you see right here. So for me, this is something that reads better to my eyes. This is, I guess, artistic preference. This is something that I like to see with in tattoos there is a little bit more thought there's a little bit more planning behind it for me personally um, when the artist takes a bit more time to really think and plan out the tattoo at the end I just feel it's going to show all of the choices that we do make during the tattoo sessions do show so why wouldn't they show when it comes to shading as well when it comes to placement shading, I will make an entirely different video and I will go in depth on my logic, thought process and approach. Again, when it comes to the placement of shading, that is an entirely different world on its own. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and stick around for that. Ring that bell so you can be notified when I do upload that video. Let's jump back into the technical aspect of shading with a mag. One thing that you're gonna notice is that the point of where I start shading from is typically the darkest point. For me personally, I always like to pinpoint where I want the darker points first, and then I kind of work from there. Being able to map out the darkest points of the shading to the lightest points is crucial to help me map out and plan out the shading for the tattoo. When it comes to tattooing, whether we're lining, shading, it really doesn't matter. As long as we are tattooing, there's a bunch of moving components and a lot of variables that should be considered when we are applying a tattoo. And again, whether it's shading or lining, there is a lot of moving components. So for example, when I am shading, I'm thinking about my hand speed and voltage. I'm thinking about the ink flow. I'm thinking about my gray wash. I'm thinking about my posture. I'm thinking about which directions I'm about to be moving so that way I could achieve certain results that I need to achieve because every tattoo design is different so you can see off the bat off the top these are variables that I'm actively thinking about when I'm applying the shading once we start aligning and mastering the technical variables on the technical side, such as adequate ink flow, correct needle configuration for the design, correct hand speed and voltage, needle depth, once these technical variables start aligning, we're gonna visibly see cleaner, consistent gradient shading. Along with the technical aspects, if we start aligning the visual aspects, such as knowing where to place shading, how dark we want other areas, how light we want other areas, if we're gonna be using textures and we want textures from our mags, once we start combining the visual aspects with the technical aspects, we're gonna get a better quality tattoo, we're gonna get a better read on the tattoo. 
you're going to notice on this part right here, my rhythm that my hand speed is moving with the voltage is going to be the same for every stroke that I hit. The strokes that I am making are almost identical. However, the only thing that's changing is the placement of where I am placing that stroke. Let's switch on over to a time lapse mode so that way I can show you all the process of where I go about placing my shading. And if you have any questions, again, I'm going to encourage you to drop a comment down below and I'm going to do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. Throughout this process of shading, my hand speed voltage and my overall rhythm does not really change. The only thing that really changes is the directions in which I am whipping the shading and the placement of where I am placing the shading. Those are the only variables that are constantly changing. Other than that, the fundamentals still apply to every single section of shading that I'm applying. I'm using just the very tips of my needles. I'm figuring out which gray wash shading that I want to use for specific parts going back to pinpointing my darker and lighter areas um, moving my needle onto the sides when I need to to get into tighter areas and again I'm just using all of the fundamentals that I know to apply this shading right here don't be afraid to work up the shading don't be afraid to go over the area maybe two or three times and i would highly recommend to really use your eyes to know when you're going to be overworking a spot signs of overworking are excessive bleeding more than you typically see redness swelling possibly so you're going to have some symptoms of overworking prior to overworking the skin that are going to let you know you need to move on to another area so i would recommend to not be afraid to really just keep your eyes open practice on fake skin and develop the fundamentals and then move on to human skin it's going to be that much more easier when we do so however you get the idea we want to build rapport and establish rapport you can see right here some areas i'm actually using the mags to give my tattoos texture which i personally love to each their own some may not like that textured streak me personally i think it goes well with this tattoo and i also think that it looks really really well i personally like the way textures read when it comes to textures from a mag I am going to be making an in-depth video on how I go about achieving certain textures, so be sure to stick around for that, hit that subscribe button for me, and ring that bell. I would like to take a moment and demonstrate some improper practice here. So I'm holding this round mag off to the side, and as you can see, I'm beginning to find my point of where I want to begin, and then I'm beginning to lay down the shading. But as I'm doing so, I'm not hitting cleanly with the even amount of needles. So one hit I'm going to be applying with say three or four needles. The next hit I'm going to be applying with six needles. The next hit I'm going to be applying with like two needles and the ink is not gonna be adequately flowing. So you can see that there is chaos happening right here within this approach. And I feel this is one of the main causes as to why people achieve choppy or inconsistent shading. So off the bat right here, I can clearly see that some of the essentials are out of line, whether it's inadequate ink flow, whether it's poor posture, poor positioning, uncomfortable with the way that they are whipping out their machine. Uh, it can vary from person to person, but the idea is that something is out of line, something is technically not correct. For me personally, this right here is the exact reason why I would recommend to get familiar and really establish rapport with the fundamentals and figure out for your setup where your voltage and hand speed sit, figure out what size needles you're comfortable with, figure out your ink flows, keep an eye on when you're running short of ink. All of this matters and all of this is developed through continuous practice of doing it. I do not recommend to practice on human skin and go shading on human skin as that may only discourage someone from actually proceeding to continue. For this area, I went ahead and I used some cross hatching to smooth everything out to give me a more consistent shade. On this clip right here, you can see I switched over to a straight mag. And one thing that I wanna point out again is that this is definitely not by any means a right or wrong way to shade, but more so one of the many ways that I go about utilizing a mag when it comes to shading a tattoo. So this is a rattlesnake needle and I believe this is a 17 straight mag. So this is just a standard mag. It's just straight across as you see right here. And the approach that I'm taking to shade this rose petal right here is I'm going to leave some of the skin showing as you can see so i'm really using that flat mag to my advantage and i'm aligning the area that i'm not going to be shading past this area that i'm defining is going to be my darkest point and i'm going to be whipping the needle out towards me creating a shade towards me as you can see 
and I'm going to repeat this process all the way across the pedal until I've achieved the desired results. You can see right here that I am moving at a good healthy speed for the voltages that I am running at and I am using just the very very tips of the needles to achieve the desired results. And again as I stated earlier shading is something for me personally that I would much rather build up than kind of go straight into like I would lining. If we're working off the tips of the needles, you should feel very comfortable going over some spots a couple of times to really build up the desired gradients and different tones that you're looking for within your work. This next clip right here demonstrates different positioning and postures and different ways that I maneuver to apply the shading the way that I am envisioning artistically. So you can see I am using the tip side of this mag. So I'm making this mag work for me and I'm just using the very, very side of it in the areas that I need just a little bit of needle. And I'm working and establishing the boundaries here. I'm working the darker areas and I'm whipping again towards me to create a shade coming towards me. So the darker areas I am starting at and then again just to confirm I'm whipping towards me on this specific pedal to establish gradients and different tones. You can see right here from this angle I am using that mag to my advantage so I'm going to lay some lines down and then I kind of continue like that and the different pressures that I am utilizing and the time that the needle is spent in the skin kind of determines how dark certain areas get. So as you can see where I lined I clearly want that area to be the darkest so I'm going to start from there and then I'm going to again whip towards me and what I'm doing is I'm just establishing where I want the darker points and I'm putting the darker points in first and I'm just shading, applying every uh, shading portion the same to the next. Um, I'm moving my hand the same each and every time I move on over so that way I get one clean consistent shading. Every new hit that I am putting in to this pedal right here is close to the hit that I previously put in. So I don't press down dramatically harder on the next one. I don't go faster or slower on the next one. Every single hit that I put into the pedals or shading in general is going to be very similar to the one that I previously inputted. And doing this ensures that I get nice, clean, consistent results rather than choppy results. Because if I was pressing down harder or moving slower in some areas, then we're going to get darker tones in some areas and you can kind of get the idea. Allow me to kind of give you a rundown and a recap on everything that I went over here in this video. So when it comes to shading with a mag, we're going to want to make sure that we are selecting the correct needle configurations for the setup at hand and for the design that we are doing. The design is going to determine the needles and the sizing that we are going to need, whether it's a straight mag, round mag, you get the idea. So get the proper needle selection aligned. Once we get the needle selection aligned and we're familiar with our setup, we want to go ahead and align our hand speed with our voltage. Doing so, aligning the hand speed and the voltage is going to ensure that every time we implement our shading in certain areas and every time we hit the skin, each and every time is going to be very close to the previous time that we hit the skin. Doing this over and over and over is going to allow us to build up smooth gradient shading while achieving smooth consistent results. So we have to know the needles that we're selecting and why we're selecting them and we have to be familiar with that hand speed and voltage. Everyone's going to be different, every setup is different. Once we have those variables aligned, we would then want to take a look at the design and determine where we want the darker points to live, where we want the lighter points, where is our light source this is the next step that I go through we can kind of see now that we are formulating a plan for the tattoos that we are about to do so along with aligning the needle selection hand speed and voltage figuring out where I want the darks and lights to be I'm now going to focus on the technical aspect of applying the tattoo which is when I apply shading I need to have adequate ink flow I need to be at the correct needle depth I need to be brushing the correct way I need to be whipping in the correct way so this is the next uh, variables or these are the next set of variables that I'm going to be thinking about and aligning. Another thing that I personally want to consider when I'm shading is working with a familiar gray wash system. I want to kind of anticipate the results that I'm going to be achieving. So working with a familiar gray wash system allows me to have that sort of anticipation over my work. And the last thing that I'm considering or one of the last main variables that I'm aligning is the placements of the shading. Placements of the shading kind of comes with more development over time. We get better on how we see designs and 
and images. We also get better at the technical side of applying shading. So that is something that I'm working into and I'm gonna make a full in-depth video on that as well. But that would be it to conclude this video right here. Those are some of the key points and variables that I am considering and aligning when I go about shading with a mag. If I didn't touch base on something specific or if you have any questions about anything that you saw or heard throughout this video, I'm going to encourage you to drop a comment down below and I'm going to do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. I also have social medias all under the same name as his YouTube channel. I would truly appreciate the support on there as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me and ring that bell as I will be bringing more videos like this for you all. Thank you for tuning in yet again. You have a great day.